Good morning, everyone. We have some more toys to show off for you today. This is not one of those toys. This is a hunk of junk. We'll get to that in a minute. What we do have, the Morimoto Four Bangers. I am so excited to finally get my hands on these. I have been waiting for this moment for a very long time. And I am nothing short of impressed with these. I had some very high expectations just seeing the videos, seeing the specifications, seeing other people's reviews, all that. But even the high expectations I had were completely dwarfed by what I actually got out of these. The amount of light that these produce is nothing short of impressive. Let's go into a quick few details here before we really get into it. On the back you see six different options. There's actually 12 different options for these lights. In each of the outputs and each of the beam patterns, there is a white light and there is a yellow light. In total, 12 different options. Two different outputs, three different beam patterns. Get into it a little bit here. We'll start with the wide beam pattern. This is actually DOT approved for use as an on-road fog light if properly mounted and properly aimed. It is a very wide beam pattern. It helps you illuminate each side of your vehicle and the ditches. It does not project out very far, but it isn't designed to. It's designed to be wide, and it is tremendously good at that. Again, this is DOT approved only if it is properly mounted and properly aimed. We'll get to more mounting stuff in a bit. Then, moving on, we have the combo beam pattern. This is my personal favorite. This is actually what these lights here are. These lights are the NCS combo, which is the lower output of the two. However, the amount of light they produce is still astronomical. It's a nice wide beam pattern, but it projects far, substantially farther than the wide beam pattern does. It's a nice blend between spot and wide. Which leads us to spot beam pattern. It's exactly what it sounds like. It's a very tight, focused beam of light. It is designed to project out very far, very effectively. It does not have much width to it, but it's not advertised as having that. If you're one of the guys running around off-road 120 mile an hour after dark, this is going to be what you want. This will illuminate the trail in front of you as much, much further ahead than any of these other options. So let's crack this open here. Open up the lid, we got this nice little fold out. Got a Jeep off roading, presumably with four bangers attached. And below that, we get to the lights. First impression, these things are tiny. Let me pull this out of here. This little guy is, it's small compared to other four LED pod lights on the market. This thing is tiny. Part of that is because it only uses three LEDs. However, again, it does compete with the four LED models, hence the name Four Banger. A lot of the reason for that is heat management. Yes, LEDs make a lot less heat than incandescent or HID halogen options, but when you're driving them this hard, they still make a substantial amount of heat. With the heat sink that Morimoto designed with this, and only using three LEDs, it's able to drive them much harder for much longer and produce a lot more light than many of the competition does after 20 minutes, after 30 minutes. Yes, it's nice to turn your lights on and have a nice bright, bright light, but if you're actually using them off-road, a really bright light at the start doesn't do you much good if it's not really that bright half an hour later down the trail. Overall, this light, it just feels like a quality light. It's very, very solid. It's got some weight to it. It's a nice hard lens, nice beefy fins on the back, you know, compared to the Amazon Special where, I mean, these weren't even installed for 5,000 miles, and they were recessed in a grill, yet somehow some of the fins still got folded over. It, yeah, it's just cheap. This is not cheap. If you fold one of these fins over, I'm a little concerned as to what on earth you were doing. This this is not a thin heat sink. This is designed to take abuse. 
You can see the lens is nice and recessed in there behind all this metal. If you're off-roading, you hit brush, you hit tree branches, whatever your case is, it'll help protect it. It'll help keep that lens clean and clear, free from scratches, performing as well as it can for as long as it can. These lights do have a lifetime warranty, yes. However, that covers defects and problems arising from normal wear and tear. If you run these into a tree, they're not covered, no. However, if you're washing your Jeep after going mudding and they fill up with water, that is covered. If you run these into a wall, that is not covered. If they stop working under normal use for whatever odd reason, that is covered. If you happen to roll your Jeep down the side of a mountain and these get crushed under it, that is not covered. They have a very nice cable coming out the back here, a very braided sheath on it. It feels like some pretty nice sheathing. It should be pretty abrasion resistant, I would think. It's got this nice stress relief plug on it. Got the waterproof grommet down there. This light is IP69K rated, which if you know about IP ratings, you know that this thing is rated to withstand steam jet cleaning with that rating. Most lights, like what this one claimed to be, this one claimed IP67 rating. Whether that was true or not, that's a different story. But IP67, which again is what most lights are, is only rated for light submersion for only about half an hour. These are rated much higher than that. I don't personally recommend mounting them on your submarine. But again, steam jet cleaning. That should say quite a lot about the quality of the build on these and what they are capable of. So moving on a little, we've got quite a few different mounting options with them. Like I was saying, they are street legal for fog light use if properly mounted, properly installed. One of the options for that with many, many vehicles, most trucks, there's quite a few Subarus, various other options. Morimoto makes a bracket that will fit this light in place of your factory fog light. You can get adapters to plug this directly into the factory fog light harness. And it's all legal. It looks very nice, very clean with the bezel that it'll come with. It almost looks factory, really. But it is substantially better. You get an insane amount of light. And again, if properly installed, properly aimed, it is DOT approved. Moving on from that, typically, when ordered, it will come with this U-bracket. It's pretty standard. I mean, this is a pretty beefy bracket in itself here. It's, I'm sure I could bend it if I really wanted to, but this is stout. Which, I mean, makes sense. It's holding a very stout light. If that is something that interests you, there's that option. To go with that, you actually have what these lights are going to be for. This is an A-pillar mount. This is an A-pillar mount for a 2017 Ram. This will put these lights on each corner of your hood, right up by your A-pillars. It lets you illuminate the ditches. It lets you illuminate down the road. It is a very nice placement, and it looks really good installed on the vehicle. This bracket... This is all 304 stainless steel. This thing is, this is beefy. If you hit, happen to hit something and this bracket breaks, you're going to have more problems than just your light breaking. If something manages to break this bracket, I'm sorry, but it's probably coming through your windshield too. This is not a flimsy, thin piece of metal here. This thing is solid. But again, it's going with a solid light. If neither of those are anything that interests you, there is also a flush mount available for these. I really wish I had one here to show you because it is really cool. It is the only flush mount that at least I have seen where you can actually aim the beam. If your bumper happens to be, you know, angled down a little, there's a little cap up on the top. You can flip it open. Inside there's an Allen wrench. If you turn it, it'll bring this light up so that you can adjust where your beam actually hits. You're not just at the mercy of whatever your vehicle came as. 
or however many washers you can cram under it to shim it and make it look okay. So that's enough on that talk. Let's get to what we're actually here to see. We want actual performance. That's what we want out of a light. For comparison, again, I'm going to use this guy. It's not a completely fair comparison because there is that yellow film on here I used to tint. But as you'll see, it doesn't really take away a whole lot. As far as Amazon lights go, this is actually a pretty solid option. This came from one of the highest rated brands that you get on Amazon. I won't go into details about what that brand is. I've covered that up. That's an argument for a different day, but... I had a 52 inch 500 watt light bar on the front of my truck along with these and these two lights here actually outperformed that light bar if that tells you anything. So let's power this guy on here and this will help show to what I meant about that TIR optic and actually aiming the beam. I apologize, I was not able to get a viable power supply option in time for this video. However, you can see, yes, it is bright. I will give it that. It's got this decent hotspot here. I mean, it's not anything too ridiculously insane, but my complaint about this light this this is vertical, so here to here is your vertical light output. It's pushing this light over quite a distance. When you're off-roading, I, I mean, I typically don't really care what's in the trees up above me. I want to see what's down the road, what I'm actually going to be in danger of running into. With this light, yeah, you get some down the road light, but you get a lot of wasted light just going off in useless directions that you don't really need. Moving on from that hunk of junk. Again, bear with me. I did not have the power supply option I wanted available at the time of this. So we're having to make do. And here we see that TIR optic. Yes, there is still a little bit of light bleeding up above, down below, but it is nowhere near as much as you're getting with that. With this guy, you get a very, very tight, focused beam of light. This is going to project down the road substantially further than what that guy, Amazon Special, is going to do. Meanwhile, it's still got a decent amount of width. I think this probably has about the same amount of width that this did, but I still think this width is brighter. This hot spot is definitely brighter. Holding this about a foot away from my hand, I can actually feel the heat from it. I, The light itself is still cool to the touch. That heat sink is doing its job very well. But it is it is getting warm down here where the light is shining. This thing is putting off an incredible amount of power. Alright, put that down before I set my workspace on fire here. So yeah, that is that. Again, I am sorry, this was a much longer video. However, there was a lot of information. There was obviously a very useful comparison to these lights versus a substantially larger light that's what you would find on Amazon or eBay advertising 10 million lumens. This doesn't claim to make 10 million lumens. The rating for this is actually done, and they even say this in the rating, they rate this after it's been powered on for 20 minutes. They don't measure how much light this guy makes until it has been sitting there, powered on for 20 minutes. When they rate these lights, they do one of two things. They either say, well, each of these chips was advertised as being X amount of lumens, and they add them all up, or they just outright pull out a number and lie about it. 
With this, they actually power on the light. They actually measure the light. Yes, this light here is cheaper. However, the warranty that this comes with, the actual performance that this light gives versus the warranty this comes with and the actual performance this light gives, the versatility and the mounting options of this, and just the overall quality, if you ask me, that justifies it. That's all I got for today, honestly. Hopefully before too long, I will have a good viable option to get a nighttime output on this guy for you. I do have a pitcher. It's not a very good pitcher, but I will do what I can. I will get a good video going as soon as I can. Stay tuned. We have a lot more coming up. That taillight project, it's actually still in the works. There's paint drying on it right now, just over there. Should be giving a sneak peek on that here very, very soon. That is something that's going to be very, very cool. You will want to see that. If you like this video, you want to see a few more, feel free to like, subscribe, leave a comment. However you want to get a hold of us. If you want some help with your lights on your vehicle, do it. Leave a comment down in the comment section. I will try to reply to as many as I can. Send us a message on Facebook. I will get that message on my phone. As soon as I can, I will reply to that message. Follow us on Facebook. We post all sorts of cool stuff all the time. Various builds that we have going on. Various promotions that we might be able to run. It's worth a follow. That's about all I got for today. Until next time.